Mike, thank you very much for sitting down with me today. Great to see you again. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Mike, at Rice Tech, we have had some gigantic successes. Um, you folks are responsible for bringing hybrid rice to the market. Since uh, I gotta get my make sure I got my information right here. That was back in 1999. Yeah, 2001. We released our first product. Right? Nice. Do that since 2003. There's been a 40 percent growth in hybrid rice every year since that launch. That's something to be proud of. Certainly is. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about? What's coming next? Yeah, so there's some very exciting things coming. We've been investing in research, and so we're really pleased with our pipeline. Uh, first and foremost, you have to remember where we came from. So the first launches were all about yield. Mm -hmm. The second launches were about agronomics and then incorporating herbicide tolerance. Now we're very focused on quality and trying to drive the quality that our end users require. And so that's been the main focus. But there is new herbicide tolerance coming. Uh, we're expanding the segments uh, that we're working in, so we're going to release a medium grain uh, rice uh, very quickly. Okay. And, and we're also thinking about, of course, higher yield. And so there's lots of good things going on for the farmer. Nice. Every industry's got threats. What do you see as threats to rice production? I don't see a lot of threats, but I do see a challenge. Okay. And the challenge that I've found in rice, which is a little bit unique, is that the phytosanitary requirements to move seed around the world are really pretty strict. Some of these are well-founded, science-based, and reasonable. Others, probably not so reasonable. And what it does is it creates a problem for us to really leverage germplasm on a global basis, to leverage our global production opportunities and to be sure we're a reliable supplier and are driving genetic gain as fast as possible. So we're working with ASTA and APHIS to try and rationalize these requirements, make sure that they are science-based, and to try and smooth out the regulatory process when, when we do move seed. Nice. One of the topics that I think is probably, the, certainly the further west we go, <laughs> the more it's the topic of conversation, is water usage. Rice is a water intensive crop. I think we can safely say that. Yeah, right? I think that's fair. <laughs> fair. So, a water intensive crop and, and water usage, water restrictions, water conservation is a, is a big topic. It is. It's a really big topic. And it's a little bit of a landmine that I'm asking you to meander through here, Mike. But can you talk a little bit about what's Rice Take's take on that? How, how, how do we handle that? And how does the company uh, see solutions to maybe some of those issues? Well, I think we have to face the reality that agriculture is the main consumer of water and, and we need to adjust to that. Uh, with urban sprawl, especially in South Texas where I live, I mean the cities and the industries demand a lot more water. and so. Agriculture is under pressure to try and reduce. And in fact, what's happened is, is that a lot of acres have gone out of production because they simply can't get the water as of a result of the last drought. And we've seen what happened in California over the last year. So uh, Rice Tech is very concerned about that. Hybrid rice in and of itself is a solution. Hybrid rice is a more sustainable rice product than varietal rice. We know through a University of Arkansas study that hybrid rice uses 36% less water. It, uses, it generates 29% less greenhouse gas per acre. It uh, is more efficient with nitrogen. It's got higher disease tolerances, so we don't use much ag chem. It mills easier, so it saves energy. So from a sustainability view, hybrid rice is a great solution. One of the things that we could spin out of this is instead of using flood, uh, with the disease resistance and the vigor that we have, we might be able to move to overhead irrigation systems, in which would expand the area where we could produce rice and give us a little bit more flexibility and use less water. Um, another thing that we're working with is that, you know, when you get to Asia, almost everything is hand seeded direct into water patties. If we could go direct seeding like we do here in the States and in South America, we can save water that way too. So we're very conscious of it. We think hybrid rice is part of the solution. Mike, you previously worked with DuPont Pioneer, you were the president of the American Seed Trade Association, you're now CEO of Rice Tech. I'm going to anticipate you got a pretty global perspective on the seed industry. What's top of mind for you when you think of the, maybe the number one issue kind of facing that that global seed industry? Yeah, so I mean today the biggest problem we're all facing is the commodity prices. Very tight commodity prices which makes a squeeze at the farm gate which really puts pressure on our growers of profitability and then that runs right upstream through through our industry. So we need to be conscious of that and it's confounded by a strong dollar 
And so those of us that work internationally are challenged to try and bring home dollars when uh, the exchange rate isn't really working in our favor. That creates a lot of short-term tension for us. And uh, the challenge for us as an industry is to work our way through this, continue to invest, and continue to attract the top talent into our industry because this is a short-term thing from my point of view. It may last some number of years, but the long-term trends are clear. So we need to continue to invest. We need to attract the best talent. Nice. Mike, you've had a whirlwind year. You, That's uh, to say the least, yes. <laughs> you, you've uh, gotten into the race business. You moved your family from Iowa down to Texas, which I'm thinking is a big shift right there. It is. Um, you had lots going on. You've had, <laughs> to say the least, you've had a lot going on. You've got one year under your belt in your new position. Can you talk to me a little bit about the rice sector is something that I don't think everyone necessarily naturally understands mm -hmm. or knows. It's different. It's different. It's different. What have you learned? What, 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 what would be the things that you would like the industry to know about the rice sector that you think maybe they don't know? Yeah. Well, I did know a little bit about rice before I went to Rice Tech mm -hmm. because Pioneer has a business in Southeast Asia and from sort of a 30,000 foot level, I knew a little bit about what was going on. But of course, I've really gotten intensely into it uh, over mm -hmm. the past year, as you mentioned. So. Uh, it is an interesting crop and the way I would say is it's a lot more like vegetables than it is like corn and beans. And the reason I say that is a direct consumption crop and when you think about rice and you think about delivering quality seed to growers and rice, you have to take three different lenses. So the first lens is the grower and the grower is interested in yield, tons per acre, right? and the disease resistance, the standability, the harvestability, the grain retention, all those attributes that help him to drive an economic yield at his farm. But it doesn't stop there. You have to think about the millers because the millers are absolutely critical in this because they're the ones that are taking the rice and then milling it out and making it available to consumers. So you have to think about uh, the, the milling yield, you need to think about the attributes they want in terms of say, for example, clarity of the grain, the translucency, the cooking qualities of the grain, and all of those factors. And then of course, in the end, it's the consumer. So what does the consumer want in terms of size, shape, taste, aroma, uh, even even texture right. and you can't imagine how segmented this market is yeah, right. and uh, as we move east to west in the US it changes if you move north to south in the Americas it changes and when you get to Asia it's a it's a montage of stuff everywhere out there and so breeding to that kind of segmented market is a real challenge and dealing with all three of those lenses at the same time is a real challenge we're really pleased with the progress we're making uh, but it's not easy stuff Nice. It, it would be safe to say too that there's a lot of pressure on rice. Like it, it's really expected to feed the world. It is. It's one of the major staples in the world. It's third only to corn and wheat in terms of number of acres. Mm -hmm. For for most people, particularly in Asia and Africa, it's it's the, the large majority of the calories that people consume, and so it is a, a huge crop, and there is a lot of pressure. And I think that this is one of the reasons it's a very emotional crop, right? This is why phytosanitary so strict. This is why import export issues are, are so strict. And, and people are protective because in a lot of ways, rice is sort of the same as food security in a lot of nations. Right. We need to be conscious of that. Nice. Well said, sir. Always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thanks for taking the time. My today. pleasure. Thank you very much.